Welcome to New Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simarca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com. Soho Brand Studio. whitebackdrops.com For making fast, photography is a form of communication, an outlet, an art form, a hobby, and since March in 2015, it became her full-time job. Mike worked as a teacher speech specialist in special and regular education. The core of Mike's photography lies in the interaction between the photographer and the model. The feeling that comes up during each photo shoot is different. She approaches her models calmly, expectantly, and intuitively. She perceives the subject's state of mind by reading their eyes. It really comes down to a form of mindfulness. With her photography, She wants to give value to things that are important in life, but are often taken for granted. She had worked with important clients such as Rabobank, Greenpeace, BCO, Vitek, among others, Nikon Netherlands, and Sigma Benelux as brand ambassador. This is No Watermark Photography Podcast. Welcome, Mike Fass, portrait photographer. And today I'm really happy to have here and uh, at the No Watermark Photography Podcast, uh, my dear friend, Micah Fass. She's an excellent photographer. She's super talented. She mm -hmm. has her own studio. She has three kids. I don't know how she does it. Like, that's my question all the time. How do you do it? And how are you, Micah? Welcome to the No Watermark Photography Podcast. I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm really honored. <laughs> good to see you again yes well I don't see you since November last year to be honest but yeah. we are like you know in touch via sms or dms on instagram I'm always like checking what you're doing and and you were the responsible of my my latest pictures my profile pictures and I was so happy to to be at your studio and to have the honor that you photograph me because I'm really, really, really difficult. It is really for, I think for all of us when we are behind the camera to be in front of the camera, correct? I think we are behind the camera for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I, I, I'm really happy with the results and I knew immediately that, okay, I have to get my pictures like with her because you are such a professional and you have a beautiful and particular style. I love your colors. I love how you handle the lights. Everything is beautiful and so creative about your work. Well, thank you. Likewise. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, can you tell us who are you and how did everything start? Well, um, yeah, most of it you already mentioned. I'm Micah. I'm 40. Um, I have three kids. Uh, it's started when I was young. I already loved photography. Um, nevertheless, I decided to do something else, maybe because it was more secure, more work. So I worked for a few years in special education with kids between 12 and 18 yes. with autism, dyslexia, ADHD. I loved that. But um, well, then I got really ill. And then I thought, okay, life could be short, can be short, can be over tomorrow doesn't have to be like that but it opened my eyes and then I decided to do what I love and that's photography so I completely changed the course yeah and, and that is an inspiring story because we when we met you told me everything and I was like wow we we end up here like being photographers because it's a beautiful scape if I, if I can call it like that like um, I mentioned before many times that I was a graphic designer and I was so fed up of the uh, agency work and how is the advertising work the atmosphere and everything and I needed something else and mm -hmm. I found my piece 
Yeah. And and my niche in uh, food photography and the same happened to you. Amazing. So tell me something. Can you describe your work and how is your process once your clients uh, contact you and they want a photo shoot with you? Uh, I try to not um, decide everything in advance. Sometimes people get a bit nervous because I, I don't ask them questions. I do ask, well, what do you want? What do you need it for? And then I basically stop asking and I just need the person in front of me. And then it's just like buying new clothes. I, I start looking what suits the person, mm -hmm. color-wise, light-wise. I talk to them, I get to know them, and then something um, develops. So it's, it's a process that I can only do when the person is with me in the same room in front of my camera. So yeah. my process is, uh, well, pretty, how do you say that? I use my intuition. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. And uh, one of the things that I read about you is like, do you like to capture like the innocence of the people when you, when you are photographing them? Well, innocence, not maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, I have to think about that actually. I mm -hmm. like to change the, the the uniqueness, the the weirdness. I love it. Everyone has it. The, the vulnerability. Um, yes. When you know when you um, when you get to uh, love someone, mm -hmm. they they become beautiful. Yes. And that's interesting to me. That's more interesting than looks. I I want to find out why people love that person and that's what I try to capture amazing and do you have a like a special ritual when you're photographing and everybody because I remember from my experience with you we talked for about an hour before starting the photo shoot and I was so worried about your time and then you said <laughs> don't worry we have uh the whole day for for us so yeah. first I need to get to know you and And then we will, you know, we will start like shooting, shooting, shooting. And then I remember one of the exercises, uh, how you made me feel comfortable in my own skin. Like, okay, close your eyes and then boom, open yes. them. And then you start like, bam, bam, bam. And do you have like a special ritual? Is that part of your ritual as a photographer to make feel, you know, make the people feel uh, comfortable in front of the camera? Well, it's interesting to hear that you mentioned this because I know I do it, but I'm not really aware of it. Um, well, I, I think I realize how it feels to be in front of a camera. You feel vulnerable. Yes. You feel, yeah, you feel like really, it, I, I go to people's personal space and I respect that and I, I value that. So I try to be respectful and I try to make them feel like they can be in control. So by asking them to close their eyes and open it when they are ready, I hope that they feel that they have control of the situation because I don't want to get too close to people when they don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. I don't have any rituals, no. Well, maybe I do. Yes, I, I think, think other do. people have to tell me. <laughs> I think you do because uh, from that moment and also because you talk with a really soft voice, you make uh, you make people feel, oh, in this, in this case, me, you make me feel like uh, I'm in a safe space. Oh, and, and I think that's really important. I had an experience or I mean, yeah, not an experience, like several experiences with portrait photos. And I'm really difficult because first I need to be in control of everything, of my emotions, of my gestures, of my everything. And then you made me forget about that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm really happy to hear that. Yes. Yeah, and then when I see the results of the, all the pictures, I feel like so comfortable. And I don't know, from that moment, I really like how I look. And I'm not a model. I'm not like a 90, 60, 90, like, you know, like a beauty know. pageant. <laughs> like a beauty pageant. But I don't know, from something happened to me after that, that photo shoot. I, I start like loving myself more in front, in oh, front really? of the camera. Yes, oh, that's giving me goosebumps. That's, I'm really happy to hear that. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. I yes. feel like more confident and I feel like, okay. You should. Yeah, because you show me what 
other people see in me like like for example my husband my husband all the time is like oh my god you're so pretty and I'm, I'm, I'm like like really like I didn't cut you my are. hair today <laughs> no no yeah. everyone's beautiful as long as they're when you know you know the feeling I mean I'm pretty sure you're much more mild towards other people and much more strict to yourself but when you really like someone's personality you automatically think that person is beautiful yeah so yeah yeah. yes that's how it works yeah and how do you find your inspirations uh, or your inspiration sorry for your photo shoot yes And, and one of the things that i wanted to ask you is like how do you cope cope with those days that you don't feel inspired at all those days are difficult and then it, it's like a wave i'm sure you know it. it goes really up really high and then it goes low and and sometimes it's a really long low and sometimes it's really short mm-hmm. yeah it's difficult i just yeah i try to talk to myself and and it's it, i don't know i don't have the solution to be honest it's mm-hmm. it's, it's difficult there are so many great photographers around us and social media yeah shows it to me every day and Mm -hmm. really insecure and it makes me inspired at the same time and it's just like a lesson that you have to keep teaching yourself to not get it too close to yourself it's just like a long long lesson and sometimes it goes easier than other times It's, Mm -hmm. it's it's based on so many factors in your personal life how close it gets to you I don't have an answer to it sometimes I'm just fine with it it's okay and other days I'm just like oh god I'm gonna stop I'm gonna look for a job <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore I'm not good enough yeah it, it all happens and I think realizing that it's part of this job and part of makes us who we are where we are is yeah. that we are so critical towards ourselves and that I think in the end it keeps us growing yes um, I say us because I, I think we recognized each other yes when it goes to this topic but yeah I I definitely have those days that I'm trying to say I I quit social media Mm -hmm. just gonna not gonna do it anymore so many great people but yeah I mean that's called the drive I think it always comes back yeah so far (laughs) that's the life of an artist and uh, I learned that or or reminded myself that I recently watched the the documentary series of Andrew Warhol that I I admire so much. I love his work and how difficult and the struggles of an artist and, you know, to face the critic. And sometimes you don't want to, you know, keep doing the same and then to try to innovate and you feel at the same time that everything is already photographed. So, and the thing is like, don't try to follow or you, you want to avoid to follow tendencies and or trends. Yeah. So you want to create your own trend. Exactly. You want to be a trend. And I think it's completely normal how you say we have ups and downs. Yeah. At the moment, uh, and, and I, I feel that I, I'm not taking pictures at the moment because my studio is in remodelation right now. But I feel that a break is necessary. Yeah. A break yeah. is necessary from, from the camera and... And from the creative part and and then use that time to maybe read a little bit. And listen to music is very inspiring for me. Exactly. Listening to some music or maybe watching some uh, documentaries. Mm-hmm. And, and I watched that from, from Warhol and other documentaries about the, the, these fraudsters that, oh my God, they have everything to be, you know, like successful and they mess it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what also helps me it's like buy new gear. <laughs> yeah, retail therapy. <laughs> that also <laughs> works. <laughs> yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah. But Keep normally, yourself. normally, how do you find your inspiration when you when you are planning a photo shoot? Like uh, where do all those ideas come from? It comes from my model. Mm-hmm. That's why I basically only photograph people because their story inspires me. Yes. And the light, of course, the light that falls. Yes. But yeah, it's always a surprise. Yes. Sometimes I w- wonder why do I give myself so much stress by not defining in advance how it's going to look? Because I never know what it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the only way I, c- I can work, apparently. I just have to wait and see what happens. 
Yes, I think it's wise. I mean, it's good to have everything like planned in advance, but in the end, I believe photo uh, photographers, uh, we are, uh, you know, problem, problem solvers yeah. in the end, because yeah, not everything always, you know, goes like in the script. Exactly. As it is on the script. And so I don't have to be stressed when something goes different, when the light's bad or when the location's not good or the model. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. I just have nothing planned yet. So we can change easily. Yeah, exactly. More spontaneous. Okay. And how do you do it, Michael? Like, you know, with three kids, how do you do it? Like you run a nice. business. <laughs> I just get not enough sleep. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I do it. It's just always, always tired. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's my my right. husband works from nine to five on weekdays and I work on evenings and in the weekends. Yes. So um, that's how it's now. It started during Corona. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had to do it like this. Before that, we were both freelance, so we could plan it a bit more. But on the other hand, the stability is, is okay. And yeah. Yeah. And my workflow just gets quicker and quicker. <laughs> that's, that's good. What is that thing that people can recognize of your photo and say, that's Mike's? That's Mike's photo. Do you have like a, how, how can you describe your, your style? Uh, I would say uh, contrast is always there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I would have to ask those people because I heard it before. And in my opinion, I, I, I make lots of different styles. Yes. Um, and my feed is not like really insta proof. <laughs> oh. Everything's different. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think it's probably contrast and focus on the eyes. Um, apart from that, I don't really know. Um, dark, maybe a bit darker, not mm -hmm. like light and airy. Yes. Yeah. But mysterious. And I remember when I met you the first time. It was uh, through a photo that uh, Sigma reposted, and it was about this little girl with the teacup and steam. Yeah, my and daughter. those those eyes uh, of that kid on the photo were like boom. Yeah, and I, I I started like you know like stalking you like okay who's this girl what is she doing and oh my god her insta is so cool her photos she's so creative and i started like following you immediately because i said this is magical when i see your your pictures they are magical they they tell a story but not uh, straightforward they are like more like you give me you give me that 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 teasing and then i want to you know get to know you more it's just like a little you know, preview. Yeah, well, thank you. Yet, what, what I actually do try is I know that when you use certain colors, mm -hmm. you can transfer a certain feeling towards the viewer. Yes. And you can enter them. So by using like cool colors or warm or dark, yeah. you can transmit like a certain feeling mm -hmm. uh, when the viewer is open to it, of course. And I think that sometimes happens, not with everyone, but apparently with you. Um, yeah, you can, you can creep into their minds a little bit and then they mm -hmm. make their own story out of an image yeah I made my own story mm -hmm. with, with with your photos and and that's amazing I mean they're open for anybody like and and that's that's a cool thing it's not like oh yeah here's a beautiful girl with a teacup I'm like no and then I'm going to like a movie you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's nice to hear actually yeah and it is really beautiful. It's like, I don't know. It took me like really like, you know, the, the movie, The Others from Nicole Kidman. Mm -hmm. Not that creepy. I love but, that, by the way. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, that kind of a time of the of a period time, like, okay, that girl, I think, belongs to that kind of movies. Yeah. And it was like mysterious at the same time and yes. cute. And I loved it. Yeah, it's funny that this kind of stuff always comes out of my images because... I'm not really like that. <laughs> I'm really positive and I'm, I like like happy things and stuff, but my images are always like a bit more dark. No, but don't take it wrong. I, I mean, no, no, I was, like what's my, my, my own imagination? <laughs> no, I, I hear it a lot and it just happens and it's funny. But yeah, on the other hand, it's also the viewer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's a, it's a powerful um, a weapon, color and light. Yes. You can control your viewers. 
Yeah, you know how to use color really, really, really well. Oh, so I do you. <laughs> Thanks. It has to look yummy. <laughs> and tell me something. How is uh, normally a photo session with you? How many photos can you take? Oh, about 800. <laughs> and how do you <laughs> process all that? Oh, it's just like, it's done in 15 minutes. I just, wow. I just select them and give them ratings. Yes. And that's really quickly done. Wow. That, uh, that is a fast one. And then, and yeah, considering that you don't like to program posing and, you know, stuff that probably for some photographers makes it easier. Like, yeah, when you have a formula, okay, the model is posing like this, like that, you know, okay, from where do you have to choose? This is something that I heard from other photographers. And then I said, okay. For social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not really good at that. I could learn from you. Um, <laughs> just, just try and see what happens. And it's, it's so difficult for me. What, what works on Monday and it's fantastic. A week later is like zero views, five views. I don't, I, that's not my, uh, yeah, it's not my specialty. Yeah. And for example, when I make photos and normally before tethering, because I know you don't tether. No. You will go with uh, free hand and, and that, that this is something that I really admired. Oh, really? And yeah, because I, when, when I went to the, the first photography school, the teacher told us, he encouraged us, like, you have to take pictures without a tripod. You have to go with your camera, yeah. with your hands. Yeah. And it was funny because, okay, yeah, sometimes you have to do a, a, an overlay photo and you know keeping the breathing and stuff it's like woohoo difficult when you are like on top of a chair or something like that before uh, tethering I used to make like more than 500 pictures of something and then yeah with tethering I just take probably three of okay, each dish time. and then it's easier so that's why every process and every uh, you know workflow is different yeah but it also has to do with your subject I mean food does not walk away Exactly. Nice. And that is a, that is a good <laughs> don't have feelings. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is something, yeah, this is yes. something. To me, photographing people is very difficult because they are not food. I mean, I can put the, the cake there and then like you stay there. Yeah, yeah. And then I can move around. And then yeah, that is the big difference. Sorry. Um, can you tell us what uh what your favorite year is? It's my um, 7200 7, lens from Sigma. Oh, wow. The uh, data lens, like uh, the heavy one. Yes. And, and what, is the, what, what is so special about this lens? The, um, I only use it zoomed in at 200. Mm -hmm. And it makes the subject pop out so much. And the background is so soft, the bokeh. Yes. It's so soft and sharp. I just love how it flows from sharp to unsharp it's mm -hmm. and then it, and also um the distance between me and the model makes it really comfortable for the model because i'm not too much in their face and i also like when you photograph like a few people it makes them like compress it's like the image get more gets more balanced mm -hmm. yeah i just really love how it um, makes everything compact i just love lens it's quick and normally what is in your camera bag uh well my my camera of course that's mm -hmm. the nikon d850 that's yes. like the best camera i've ever owned mm -hmm. um i've had it now for like three years and i'm still not uh, fed up with it it's really good uh i have my 20 uh yeah 24 70 lens yes just for like overview shots um and um the, the 50 millimeters when yes. they get comfortable with me I can show it's like some close jobs it's not really a portrait lens especially not combined with the full frame camera but I love it for details mm -hmm. and it's really light and quick yes um it's an older one it's like a d series it's a bit of a vintage lens vintage yes and what else yeah my, my spare body yes. um apart from that not much just in case just in case yeah. yes yeah, yeah that is a good one a good advice to to 
carry with you an extra body just in case. That is yes. really handy. And what is your favorite subject to photograph? Kids, mom. Oh, yeah, well, I do love kids, yes. Yes. It's, a, it's always a returning theme in my life, in my work. I have so many. <laughs> no, it's just I love them because they're so pure. Yes. And it's so easy for me to get like to the essence of them. They're just like so not posing, not acting. It just surprises me all the time. That's what's beautiful. inside them. That's beautiful. Yeah. And are you a big fan of uh, natural or artificial? Well, I, I really, my comfort zone is natural light. It's just, um, I think I, I, I yeah, I, I got to know it pretty well. And it's still challenging because you never know it completely. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you can directly see how it falls and how it's going to end up on your photo. But I also love flashlight. Yes, I, I start doing more and more of it. I have to learn a lot, but I love the challenge. I love learning about it. So, yes. yeah, I love both. But I, I'm, I'm better at natural light. Yeah, yeah. and that easier. And those portraits uh, that you do for companies, uh, what do you normally use? Like a flash? Flashlight. Flash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like when you have to photograph more people, flashlight is easier because then you get this uniform look that mm -hmm. all the pictures are the same. Yes. And to close this, can you give us some, some golden advice for those uh, beginners who want to level up in uh, portrait photography? Yes. Um, Keep looking with the eyes. Don't focus on gear. Don't think that you can make better images with better gear. Yes. Um, it's way more important to, to look with your eyes and, and see the, the quality of the light. And what you see is what you photograph. And it does not really matter if you do that with your telephone or with a good camera or a bad camera. Mm -hmm. um, don't focus too much on that. Just keep practicing and keep yeah using your eyes. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And the question that I always get on DM, and probably you as well, because you are um, Sigma brand ambassador, congratulations. I know you have been for a long time. And also you were a Nikon uh, or Nikon uh, photography amb uh, amb ambassador as well for the Netherlands. How is the, the experience? Because uh, the question is like, how do you get into that? How do you, uh, how do, you do to work with brands and What's the secret? Uh, I, secret? Think, I think first of all is because I'm a woman and when you're into technical things, it's just like, that's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. not, it's just like that. Um, yeah, and, and try not to follow too many trends, I think. I mean, if you just, it's really difficult, but try to stay unique and st stick to your own style and then you stand out. They're not looking for like, yeah one in a dozen mm -hmm. apart from that I don't know I guess I'm just lucky um I don't really know to be honest I posted on a few platforms I was active on that maybe that helps as well like zoom and 500 pics but apart from that I don't know I think it's just uh, a combination of luck and hard work hard work <laughs> yes. yeah I think it's actually it sounds bad but it is Something tells me that it's more about hard work than yes. luck. Yes, <laughs> actually. Sometimes people do think that you get like this thrown into your lap like a gift. Mm -mm. Well, it's not really like that. No, I mean, no, no. We are awake, working when other people are relaxing. Exactly. Um, it's, it's a lot of work. It's more than a full-time job. Yes, yes, yes. I think that we had this wrong idea then when we decided to, you know, go into the freelancing uh, work yeah. world, like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to work from nine to five anymore. <laughs> like, no, 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 we work more than that. Exactly. It's, it, it is. And also, it's, you don't have to, you should not be picky. You should take a lot of jobs, take a lot of work, and then something comes out of it in the end. But Yes. I, I was never in a position to say I will take that job and I will not take that job. I, I was in a position where I had to take every job. Yes. And well, that also brings you further, I think. Yeah, because you practice more and more and then you, you are just facing situations. Yes. That and you meet like people that bring you further. Yes. That's maybe the luck part, but that's also like yeah, the hard work part at the same time. 
So yeah, it's it's a lot of yes. combination of factors, I think. Yes. Well, Maike, I'm so happy to have you here on this interview. We were like talking and talking since last year. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, before I decided to, uh, you know, release the, the English uh, podcast before we did it in Spanish. I mean, you know, <laughs> only me. I, I tried to do it in Spanish first to see how it goes. But then the people started like asking, please, can you do it in English as well? Like, okay, I will, I will, I will. And here we are, finally. Hey. I'm yeah. so happy to have you here. Can yes. you please remind us your website, social media? I'm going to leave it anyways uh, on the description box. And But I wanted to hear from you where we All can right. find you. My website is uh, uh, www.studiominmin.com. Yes. Um, my Instagram is Maike Shower Photography. Mm -hmm. And that's about it, I think. <laughs> Yeah, and then on your on her website you can uh, contact yeah. her, you can email her. Also yes. on Instagram she responds the DMs, so she's really cool. And, and sometimes yeah. it takes a bit, but I respond that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, I'm so happy to have you here and for this opportunity. If you want to say something to the audience, it is your well. Time. I want to say to you, thank you, and I hope to see you soon again. Yes. We should do something together and. Thank you so much for this. Uh, I'm really honored and I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. I, I'm really, I'm really happy. And I know we are going to do a cool stuff together. <laughs> really soon. Thank Stay you. tuned. Stay tuned. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for this interview. And thank bye -bye. you all. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.